Hello everyone. Today we're looking at Ethernaut level 7, which is force. So the goal of this contract is it says some contracts will simply not take your money. And the goal of this level is to make the balance of the contract greater than zero. Okay. So if we take a look at this contract below. It's actually, it's a pretty funny contract because there is absolutely nothing in it. And <laughs> there's this cat meme uh, which is commented out. So if you actually remove this, this is a completely empty contract. So of the, it, it seems there's no way to send it any ether. Let's get a new instance and let's try to figure out a way we can get this to work. So we have an instance. Um, I want to show you the contract ABI once. So if we take a look at the ABI, you see it's completely empty. That's because this contract has absolutely nothing in it. It's not a joke. It's completely empty. So, you know, normally uh, the way to send Ether to some contract is, you know, either there's some sort of payable function in it, or maybe they have a fallback function or a receive function where you can send it any ETH. But this has none of that. It's absolutely empty. So we can't just send it ETH to make its balance greater than zero by literally just sending it ETH. In fact, if I try it right now, right, I copy this address, the contract address, and I go ahead and I try to send it some amount of ETH, let's say this small amount of ETH, and I click confirm. Let's see what happens over here. So as you can see on Gurley, uh, the Gurley Explorer, this transaction actually failed. Uh, we are not able to send it ETH just by sending it ETH. And there's no payable functions, there's nothing. So how do we increase the balance greater than zero? So this is actually a pretty cool trick. What I'm gonna do is we'll head over to Remix and we'll need to create a new contract for this. Let's call this takemymoney.sol, all right? and use whatever solidity version let's do like 0.8 something and what we want to do um, is create this contract you know take my money and we'll set it up such that during deployment uh, we can give it some amount of ETH uh, we'll just mark it a payable function so we can give it some amount of ETH so it has like this contract has some balance and we will create a function called take my money, which takes in an address of the force contract. And this is a public function, okay? What we need to do here is Solidity has this interesting thing called self-destruct. And self-destruct is typically used for um, you know, it's it's a function that self-destructs the contract, as the name suggests. So it literally deletes it from the blockchain. And there are some use cases for this, you know, if you have like some sort of temporary contract, perhaps like some sort of game that's running between two people or some sort of like escrow contract that was created for like a specific payment, maybe after its usage is complete, after it's done, doing what it was supposed to do. You know, you can self-destruct it and the code of the contract is going to be zeroed out. So the code at this address where the contract was deployed is going to get zeroed out and this contract will effectively not exist on the blockchain anymore. But what self-destruct also allows you to do is it allows you to pass it a recipient address which can send all of its ETH balance to the recipient address as part of the destruction. So, you know, it's kind of like this contract is being killed, uh, the code is being deleted. So as part of that deletion, we'll send any ETH this contract has to the recipient address. And this is just like a funny little quirk about how the EBM works. When you send money through a self-destruct function to a different address, it actually bypasses sort of the usual uh, guardrails set around the contract. So even though there's a completely empty contract with no fallback, no receive function, no payable functions, 
and we cannot send it any ETH normally, when we do it through self-destruct, it will actually work and self-destruct will force it to kind of take the money. So I'm gonna show it to you right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna compile this contract and license not found, okay. And we're going to shift over to the injected provider and I'm going to give it a little bit of ETH to get started, you know, enter um, some ETH for during deployment. And we are going to deploy this smart contract. Oh. Oh, right, sorry, I missed this error. It wants a payable address. So we'll mark it a payable address and compile this. And now we can deploy this. And confirm this transaction, wait for it to be mined. Okay, once the contract has been deployed, we go in, you see it has a little bit of ETH balance. And we take the address of the force contract. We take this address. And what I want to do is just pass it to the take my money function and call that function. Okay, so that went through. And you know, if we go back and it says, you, you can see it says the balance is now zero ETH. And if we go back over here and get the balance of the contract address, the force contract address now, you see it's no longer zero. It actually has some some ETH. And there's no other way you could have sent this ETH to it except for self-destruct. So we'll go ahead and submit the instance now. Hit confirm. And now we have passed the level. So as I said, in Solidity, for a contract to be able to receive ETH, the fallback function must be marked payable. However, there is no way to stop an attacker from sending ETH to a contract by self-destructing. Therefore, you should not count on something like address this dot balance equals zero for any sort of contract logic, because even though you think there's no way the balance of this contract can be increased above zero, if somebody decides to do a self-destruct, there is no way to stop them. So just be careful about this funny little quirk about the EVM. It's an interesting level. And that's it for today. I will see you in the next one, which is going to be Walt. Cheers.